What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Man United Central, and I'm your boy, Luther. I'm super excited that you're back here to get your Manchester United updates because, as you know, when it comes to Man United, things move fast and there's always something new to report. Again, before we get started, do me a favor hit that subscribe button and notification bell that way you do not miss any new updates when it comes to this channel. That being said, let's jump into it. So today we're going to start with um, uh, the updates that we have that dropped not recent, uh, pretty recent when it comes to uh, the whole takeover situation, the takeover saga. Are you ready? <laughs> Strap in. Let's go. So uh, the report today is coming from, uh, this is from according to Mike Keegan from the Daily Mail in the UK. Mike Keegan is a prominent reporter when it comes to uh, all the news related to Manchester United, and he just dropped one, uh, an update, uh, I would say a couple of hours ago, uh, right now, local time, where I am, it's about, uh, I would say four, so about two hours ago, but again, that is not, neither here nor there. Let me give you the information. So according to reports from Mike Keegan, the takeover saga has taken a dramatic turn, right? Sheikh Jassim's camp. Uh, we know she just seems the Qatari billionaire behind the 9-2 foundation has made a jaw-dropping 6 billion bid for uh, for a complete takeover of the club. So basically these details are just coming out now how much he put in because it wasn't really revealed. People were speculating but now we have more detail what you know what was put in. Right? So he goes on to saying that um, and uh, so that 6 billion bid uh, for the complete takeover. And that's not all. The offer also includes an astonishing 800 million euros investment um, uh, when it comes to, you know, infrastructure and team and all that stuff, right? Now, again, that is, when, it, when, it, when we talk about going all in, that is going all in. This guy, he's not playing. Sheikh Jassim, okay, let's move on. Let's go on, there's more. Now. This offer from Sheikh Jassim has sent pretty much like, you know, shockwave through the football world because, you know, it's, it's a huge bid, uh, something that, um, you know, it will, it will be a, a world record when it comes to the takeover of a sporting franchise, sporting club. Now, okay, if this he, bid is accepted, it will pretty much show, send shockwaves up, uh, across the whole world really when it comes to uh franchise sports ownership uh because i think the closest one right now with is the washington commander which is an nfl football team i believe uh the i'm not sure if the sale already happened for that one but i think the bid was close to uh five billion plus so if this goes through yeah united will, will be on top again you know when it comes to will, would have been sold but uh for the most <laughs> The most money kind of thing, right? So, uh, there's more. Now, Sheikh Jassim's arch rival in the takeover battle, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, um, uh, who is the uh, billionaire from the Ineos, in the past, he was strongly in the league, right? But Sheikh Jassim, that this last minute improved offer has completely changed the game, right? Ratcliffe's camp now uh, who have been quote unquote in advanced talks, but now in, insiders think that Sheikh Jassim has kind of taken that lead because most people are like, you know what, Sheikh Jassim, uh, the Sir Jim, because of him giving the Glazers option to stay, you know, he was in, a, in the lead. But now with this bid, and you know, the, the Glazers are motivated by, you said it, cash money. That's what they want, right? So, uh, the, the basically this race is wide open um, because no one is really leading. But now we, we, based on this new information, we think that the Qataris uh, from Sheikh Jassim they may be on the lead, right? So basically, the tension is building up, right, on both parties to finalize the details. So what is happening now is the lawyers representing both Sheikh Jassim. And Sir Jim Ratcliffe are in deep dialogue 
with the ring group. The ring group are the ones who are handling the sale, right? Which is, uh, the, the ring group is a UN, uh, US merchant bank, which is handling the process, right? The Glazers family, who are the current owners of Manchester United, will soon reveal their preferred bidder. So, again, guys, the suspense is killing us, right? We just want this over, right? Now, so you might be wondering how all this affects the upcoming transfer window. Uh, obviously, it's you know it's kind of obvious, but with all this, you know we're wondering how much will Ten Hag uh, have to spend because again, uh, the transfer window, I believe, yes, it opens next week. I think the fourteenth. So, again, uh, from what uh, we see in the reports is, so far he has a, 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 an actual amount, a uh, hundred million. So a hundred million is there for him to spend, even though whatever happens to the whole takeover thing, he has a hundred million. So if he has a hundred million, it means that, you know, he has to do some selling, you know, in addition, that way he can generate um, uh, more money, right? Now, will uh, Sheikh Jassim emerge, if Sheikh Jassim emerge victorious with his groundbreaking offer, uh, basically, that amount, it may change. Or even this uh, Sir Jim, I believe if he was to also take, take uh, being um, announced as a preferred bidder, that amount may change. They may find, you know, these lawyers may find loopholes and say, hey, you know what, I know you only have this much. You have to sell to buy we can probably increase it but again as uh, our previous videos we've talked about uh i'm personally thinking that we're going to spend them up uh, close to 200 million right because you know if we do some sales and stuff like that we can hopefully put together uh close to 200 million to get us um the players hopefully what we need and um uh ten Hag can do what he does that way you know we can be ready for next season so again uh this whole thing with the takeover it's really like um it's crazy but uh according to reports by next week we are sure to you know find out who is the preferred bidder i know you're saying i know what you're saying you're like yeah we haven't heard that before i know this thing has been dragging on along they've been just pulling our strings but yeah, yeah next week next week next week but according to reports um for Mike Keegan, it looks like uh, we are c getting close to the end of this saga, right? Uh, and the end, the way it looks like, it's going to be next week. So again, stay tuned, stay locked into this space, and we will give you all the updates as they come along, right? Now, that being said, that is all I got about the, um, the whole takeover. Now let's switch gears to what we like to hear when it comes to the potential incomings outgoings who's coming in who we linked with all right so that being said let's let, let's look at this this today this will call me off guard i'm sure it caught everybody off guard united is we're being linked with come on jordan pickford from everton right so the basically we look like i don't know what or who from the United, I, I don't know, it could be Eric, Eric Ten Hag, according to reports, uh, they think that Pickford could be, is it a, an upgrade or a downgrade from the hair? I don't understand. P Pickford is, yes, he is a good shot stopper, pretty much just like the hair, but his distribution is n nowhere near as good, right? Because if we're going to bring in another keeper, we want to be able to play from the back. Like yesterday, I'm sure some of you know, uh, seen uh, the match with Man City, uh, the uh, the guy from on, uh, Onana from uh, Inter, right? And he's a good uh, goalie, man. You saw some of uh, he was the defenders will we kind of back pass to him. He'll play around comfortable. That's the kind of keeper that we want, right? And I don't know. Uh, Ten Hag has had Onana in his team in the past, so that could be the play, the kind of goalkeeper that we want. But the way it looks like is Chelsea are leading the hunt for Onana. So definitely, I don't think we're going to be in for Onana. But Onana will be the kind of keeper you want. Not Pickford. Come on, man. Pickford, I, I don't even know why he's uh, England number one. Right? 
because he's number one, right? Because he's really not that good. You know, yes, he's passionate. You know, whenever, uh, honestly, whenever I watch Everton, whenever they're struggling to stay up, like last season, the season before, yeah, man, Pickford is one of those, like he's the captain, like motivating his team. Come on, guys. Yeah. And then he does make uh, some really good saves, but we, we don't need him uh, for United. So I really hope we don't go for him. Uh, like for sure, you know, these are just probably just paper talk rumor, but it looks like uh, United are in for Pickford. Other news, let's move on, right? So, in other news, this is according to uh, a prominent right. in when it comes to German football, Christian Falk is reporting that um, United is preparing a bid for Randall Colo Muani from Frankfurt. Now, Christian Falk is very prominent, he's very plugged in when it comes to all news when it comes to the Bundesliga, which is the German league. So he's plugged in, he knows the, in, the ongoings of uh, the transfers that happen there. Usually whenever he hints out uh, some certain transfers, usually they do uh, come out to be uh, pretty accurate. So basically, the situation between the club and the player, club meaning Frankfurt and the player, um, um, have been kind of um, has shown that uh, Moani is very eager to make um, to secure a move um, to Manchester United. Right. So Moani had a sensational season in Germany. He has scored 15 goals and provided 14 assists in 32 Bundesliga matches. Uh, uh, Moani is actually a 6-2. Uh, striker and um, definitely we could use his height he's good in the air in ball control and you know he, he knows where the goal is right <clears throat> so also Moani uh, also featured for France in the World Cup uh, where he made a significant impact so uh, as United fans you know you know we're pretty excited about this being linked to him and um, we should keep an eye on this uh, space and see what what happens now let's move on to another news. Um, another news is uh, Manchester United's pursuit of a new another uh, goalkeeper, Diego Costa, from Porto, might uh, might be available apparently at a lower price at a lower price uh, than initially reported. Reports suggest that Porto needs to balance their books to keep. Uh, to comply with the financial fair play rules, right? They need to balance the books, so they, as a result, um, uh, players will need to be sold before June 30th, right? Uh, this situation presents an advantage for United, which we have, uh, for the longest time, been linked with uh, Diogo Costa, um, who will be a fantastic replacement for David De Gea, because we, Diego, Diogo Costa is in definitely a goalie uh, that um, the Ten Hag likes. He's comfortable on the feet. He's a good shot stopper too, you know, so, but again, the price was pretty high. So we were, you know, we're kind of working with Porto and see what we can do. But with this news about the financial fair play, his price being dropped, maybe we can jump in. But again, you know, we'll keep an eye on this space and see what happens, right? And um, other news, this is kind of sucked. But uh, let's talk about the. Uh, we, there's a little setback when it comes to our pursuit of Napoli defender Kim Min Jae. So talks between United and um, uh, Kim Min Jae has hit a roadblock in recent weeks, as reported by Foot Mercato. Uh, despite the Korean international being a top priority for Red Devils, discussions have slowed down. Interestingly, it appears that. Newcastle, because the Newcastle can offer can also offer Champions League football. Uh, they have kind of stepped up their interest, and also yesterday we remember I reported that PSG now is also interested in him, and um, as well as Chelsea. So it's a huge competition for this kid. Um, you know, may the best team wins. I hope it's us, but uh, yeah, it, you know, we'll we'll see how that uh, goes. Um, other news. Uh, it's reported that uh, <laughs> uh, our captain Harry Maguire 
his future hangs in the balance because now there are two another two teams that are interested in him. Ooh, we like to hear that. Uh, Newcastle and Aston Villa are reported interested in signing the England defender. However, United seems unwilling to let him join Newcastle on loan because actually what we're trying to do is we don't want to send the player like Maguire on loan. We just want to cut bait. Hey, you know what? We want a full sale. You take him. We don't want to do, deal with uh, the loan situation, which I personally like that because, come on, we're tired of loans because like you send them alone and then they come back at the end of the season. What's up with that? Then you are back to square one. So, and uh, others reported that I know we were linked with Neymar, which I, I wouldn't be surprised if Neymar ends up with United guys. It's very weird, but reports today it show it's uh, stating here that Neymar is being linked with a, a move to the Saudi Giants Al Hilal, right? You know, we know that Neymar, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely due to leave PSG. And again, we see all these superstars who are up, kind of up there in the age going to the Saudi league. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised also if he goes to Al Hilal because yeah, they have a ton of money. And we saw uh, Karim Benzema going there. Of course, CR7 is there. So now with uh, Neymar going there, you know. I wouldn't be surprised, but they couldn't get Lionel Messi, which this guy decided to go to Miami. And for us here in the uh, U.S., we're boosted. We're super excited with that because we actually get to see in one of these matches, you know, uh, we get to see the second greatest player in the world live. <laughs> I know, I'm biased. Ronaldo is still my man, all right? Um, let me see what else I got for you guys real quick. Um, yeah, guys. Uh, I think that's I've covered everything that I needed to cover. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And as news breaks, I will be here to give you the complete rundown. Again, I appreciate you guys hitting the like, subscribe, notification bell as you head on out. Thank you so much. Take care. Peace.